But the more America achieves, the more hateful and enraged these crazy Democrats become. Crazy Nancy. Think of that. That crazy Nancy, she is crazy. And Shifty Schiff, how about this guy? How about this guy? He makes up my conversation, which was perfect. I don't blame China, by the way. I blame our leaders for allowing this horrible, you know what, and pillage. It's the R word. You know what, and pillage. You know what word I'm talking about, right? I don't want to use it because they'll say it's a horrible word that Trump used. So the Bidens got rich while America got robbed. And that was Donald Trump in Dallas, Texas last, Dallas, Texas last night at a massive rally, overflow crowd. I've seen estimates where the Dallas police said 80,000 people showed up either to make it into the arena that sat 20,000 to stand outside or just got there, realized they couldn't get seats and went to bars and restaurants in the neighborhood. It's not happening for Joe Biden. I think Bill Weld and Mark Sanford got like a person each at their rallies to challenge Trump. But the polls are telling us Trump is going to be impeached while Trump's base is flooding arenas. Here to discuss further are good friends, former Assistant U.S. Attorney Francie Hakes and Trump 2020 Advisory Board member Steve Rogers. Good to see you both. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You know, Francie, first thing I'm going to ask you the legal questions. Everybody's talking about quid pro quo, quid pro quo. But I, I just had Ed Pazwali on. He's a partner at uh, the president of Trip Scott Law Firm. And you were, we were talking about the U.S. Code, but you worked at the DOJ. You held senior positions there. From what you see, has the president or Mick Mulvaney or anyone in the administration broken any federal laws? You know, John, it's, a, it's such a great question. I don't think so. I certainly don't see it. But here's what I don't hear anyone talking about with respect to quid pro quo and why I think so many Trump supporters are so angry about the rank hypocrisy of this impeachment inquiry. You remember Bo Bergdahl when sure. President Obama traded five murderous Taliban fighters for Bo Bergdahl. That is the very definition of quid pro quo. It was one thing in exchange for another. I don't remember anyone opening an impeachment inquiry or the mainstream media condemning President Obama as a traitor. It was part of the presidential powers that he enjoyed. We might have disagreed with it, but it's part of the presidential power. And, you know, when it comes to Department of Justice, there are things called MLATs, Mutual Legal Assistance right. Treaties. We have them with just about every nation on earth. And when we have criminal investigations or prosecutions pending that we need help with from foreign countries, it is not uncommon that the president will raise that request to the head of this other state of the other country to try to get that cooperation going. And it appears to me from the conversation that I've read that's exactly what he was doing. He was elevating it to the presidential level to assist in the cooperation of investigations by the Department of Justice into potential misconduct at the 2016 election. You know, Francie, that is such an excellent point. You're the first person I've had on the show that brought up Bo Bergdahl. And I know Steve is shaking his head yes, because in addition to being with the advisory board, Steve was with the FBI. Steve, Francie's spot on here. And you're with the advisory board. You go to these rallies. Trump's base is not talking about impeachment. I, I had Jeff Lord on the show the other day. He's a good friend of ours, a regular. Jeff is in Pennsylvania. He said one of the Pennsylvania newspapers conducted a poll across the board, Republican, Independent, Democrat. Not one person, not one in critical Pennsylvania, Steve, said impeachment was a top priority for them. How about this, John? Not only the president's base is not talking about it, but the Democrats are not talking that's about true. it. That's true. Their Believe voters me. don't care. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, John. I'm out on the streets. I'm in Main Street, USA, um, with the grassroots Americans, Democrat and independent voters. You know what they're talking about? Their 401ks, their quality of life. Right. They're talking about entrepreneurship. I've talked to business people, men and women and young entrepreneurs who are saying because of this president, they now have a chance to make a decent living and to grow their own little economy in their home. So they don't care about impeachment. And, and at the end of the day, I've got to tell you, any Democrat in Congress who sees what we witnessed last night, the tens of thousands of people weekly showing up for President Trump, that's going to run a chill uh, right up and down their spine. 
And they're going to be real careful now before they move forward with impeachment. You know, so, Francie, I'm with you. I'm with Steve as well. I mean, I, I speak to regular Americans every day on social media. They, they reach out after the show. They don't care. They don't care, and especially those independent voters, that 4 to 7 percent independents and non-party affiliated who really decide all of our elections today because we've got our I know I'm an R voter right? I vote down the line R unless somebody's particularly terrible then I just don't check their name but that hasn't happened in a long time so what we're left with is this impeachment proceeding that looks to me like an illegal sham now the White House is treating it as such the White House is saying Francie well look you don't want to hold a vote you don't want to adhere to tradition and protocol and the rules of the House of Representatives we're not going to comply with any of these nonsensical subpoenas, Adam Schiff, because I believe he's biased. What, is, what legal jeopardy is Defense Secretary Mark Esper in, White House officials, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, that are refusing to comply with Schiff's subpoenas? You know, it's interesting, John, they're not in any immediate danger because the Department of Justice is who would have to prosecute them. And of course, the Department of Justice is not going to. But when you look at the Supreme Court's rulings on this issue, which there aren't very many of, chiefly it's back from the Nixon impeachment. When you look at the Nixon decisions, the Supreme Court held that the executive could be compelled to answer subpoenas from Congress when the subpoena is lawful, but only after there's been some kind of good faith accommodation or negotiation between Congress and the executive. And certainly Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are in no mood to negotiate. Adam Schiff and his committee, they're not negotiating. They're just sending subpoenas. They're making no good faith effort to talk to the administration about what they think they might be able to turn over in regards to this inquiry. It just looks to me like with Nancy Pelosi's decision uh, this week or last week to not hold a formal House vote, this looks like all they want to do is investigate so that they can send subpoenas, scream about obstruction of justice, and say that the president is a traitor or committing uh, impeachable offenses, but not really be held to political account for it. And it seems transparent. And it is dangerous, I think, for this country to get into the place where you've got the opposition party screaming about impeachment when the president exercises his lawful discretion simply because they disagree with it or dislike the president. You know, Steve, Francis makes a great point. I'll take it one step further. I think Adam Schiff is engaging in taxpayer-funded opposition research for weak, inferior Democratic candidates here. I think this is, is really a travesty. Well, it is a travesty. And keep in mind that, uh, is it uh, him who recently stated that, well, you know, we don't need the whistleblower to come before uh, our committee. Uh, also, didn't he not set up some rules where the Republicans are not allowed to cross-examine or ask questions of these witnesses? So what That's Adam ridiculous. Schiff is doing, he is using the, uh, the judicial or the uh, United States Congress as a weapon. You know, we've heard the word weaponized. They've we weaponized the FBI. They've weaponized the intelligence community. Well, now they're weaponizing the process uh, in the United States Congress to bring this president down. And it's going to fail. And it's going to utterly fail like everything else they did has failed. But I've got to tell you, they are causing a lot of anger across this country, not at the president, at them. And they've got a lot they're going to pay for in November. Yeah, look, I agree. Francie, real quick, we have about 30 seconds left. The other day, I was really uncomfortable when Adam Schiff said, well, there's no special counsel. So essentially, that's now my job. To me, that was a very dangerous breach of power. It is, John. I mean, they're not really conducting oversight. They are simply doing, as you said, oppo research. And that is not what the congressional subpoena was designed for. It's not what the Constitution says is part of their duties. And I think it sets a dangerous precedent. Francie Hakes, Steve Rogers, great to see you both. Thanks. Pleasure. You thanks. too, John. All right, when we come back, there is an absolute.